Welcome back to the second half of day two of the Norwegian Championship main event. We have a brand new feature table here at the Casino Bratislava. We do not have Espen at the table anymore, but we do have a fourth <coughs> champion of the Norwegian <laughs> Championship. <laughs> Let's see how this uh, new table will play out. We have 312 players here. About one third of the field left. This was a freeze out affair. Lines have gone up to 3,000. of the new table. Everybody with some chips except for Mats Quist who uh, has 15 big blinds with a little bit less than a starting stack. So while at the first table we saw some, let's say, unorthodox play by a few of the players at the second table was fairly more standard. Curious what we will see here. A small blind. He does have a bunch of chips. Getting a few more after the big blind holds. So far, so good. Very quick hand there, though. There's 15,000 chips in the pot before the cards are even dealt. With a 6,000 big blind and the big blind to 6,000 and a small blind to 3,000. <laughs> Once again, for those of you just tuning in, this is Jason Gladson, poker reporter, poker commentator, poker podcaster. I've done a lot of different things. When you get the dark, it's not too bad. As well. And of course, I do love to play poker. Everything about my life outside my family is poker related. You just have to split them and hold the poker. If I want to have a night out, it is never to a bar or to a club. It is always to a a casino to play some poker. The only exception might be when I'm working and I'm constantly at a casino, then you might see me at a night out at a karaoke bar or elsewhere. Obviously, I do enjoy good restaurants and good meals, so not talking about that, but everybody does need to eat. But enough about me, let's get back into the action. We've seen a lot of folding on this table. Hold on one second, be right with you. Sorry, when you get the cards, you split them, split them up and uh, hold them from five seconds. Yeah, in the box. You have the box right there. Yes. So I just got a little bit of information to share from the Norwegian commentators. Uh, the four-time champ, actually, the reason why I couldn't figure out his name, because he's not actually at the table. Apparently he busted out just before this feature table began. So there is no four-time champion at this table, but it does look like an interesting table. So far we've seen only some tight play with some folding. But play typically will get tighter and tighter as the blinds go up and up by a lot of the players. Not necessarily the case for the bigger stacks. But as I say that, we should see some action this hand. We have Rongstad opening up for a min raise with the Queen 10 suited from the hijack. Pulls around to Axelson in the small bind. And Mads folds. And Kent Road here with the King 5 may defend. It's only to a min raise. Kent has been around. I've seen him at different <coughs> locations over the years. And Rongstad, although there are two aces there, did connect with his 10 on this flop. Road 
checks, and very often this will go check bet fold. But maybe Road thinks that his king kicker has some value here. We haven't seen these players play yet. But does the logical thing and does fold his hand. No fancy play. Den er sikkert han er nysynglig, jeg sikkert. Said, who just went ahead with Queen 10 suited, opting to fold his Jack 10 from earlier position. But meanwhile, Aspas here opting to open his King 3 offsuit. So now things are opening up a little bit. It's a raise to 14,000. Road pausing with the 7-5 offsuit before tossing it away. And while this would be likely calling to a mid-raise, let's see. In this case, it was a little bit more. He is showing the three to the table. With the showman here. I'm not sure if he did that for the stream or if he's been doing that before. By the way, he's showing the table that he can be opening light, giving away that information, but perhaps he's going to try to use that information to his advantage. And now looks ready for a massage. The massage team has been fantastic. They work very hard. that I haven't had time to be at the table. So you can get up and stretch quite often. I haven't been in the need, but very often when you're playing hours and hours at a time, a massage will help. But back to the action, we have Kent Road here with big slick on the button. <coughs> this isn't a king three open, it's a king ace king open. So a bit different than the last hand. Unfortunately for him, nobody waking up with anything, but maybe Hope Road will call is suited. It is a weak suited hand now, and does decide not to play that very speculative hand. So all Rook is able to accomplish is take the blinds, but he still all smiles. Aspas, who just raised with the king three offsuit, is opting now to once again be a little bit speculative, but this hand flops obviously a little bit better with the 10 8 suited. Raising to 15,000, two and a half big blinds from early position. But so far, nobody waking up with anything they want to play back with. Hobrod with the jack seven suited tosses out of way. And Wrong said, even though it's an early position open, may decide to play his ace five only because Aspas showed that he can <coughs> be opening light, perhaps want some action, perhaps feels he can outplay people post flop. Is he going to show this time? doesn't appear he did, but picks up the pot, so he has now uh, two steals to his name at the feature table.
Nose Pass is definitely making things interesting. This open, I think everybody can get on board with, though. Opening up to 13,000 with the sevens. Even under the gun, this no is power. fine. Lot of power. You had. Peter Vist here. Holding his 4-3. Cobra, though, may want to do something a little bit different. We did just see a 3 come out. Doesn't want to play his pocket pair. A bit too small for his liking. And uh, all the threes would have been dead. But Aspa so far raising it up three different times, getting walked to all three. Keep in mind, you add 15,000 to your stack every time you get a steal. So he's already added 45,000 just from this alone. And he's now in the big blind, so it's his turn where it's going to cost 12,000 this hand with the blind and the ante. And when he's in the small blind, the falling hand top to toss another 3,000 in. But basically paid his way through three orbits if he wanted to go and get that massage off the table. Axelson with the threes this time. Not a player that I recognize. As I mentioned, I've seen Rude around before. Peter Fisk, holding. Let's see what Stad decides to do from the button in an open pot. We'll be raising his king. Looks like the 13. It is the 13. And Salkstad waking up with the ace queen. Does have the big stack at the table. We'll be three betting it. And that should work with Longstad not having much. No point even in position to be calling a three bet with king six, and he agrees. <coughs> are asking about music because there is some music playing on the main floor. Unfortunately, when we have a film TV table and music is played, that's something that YouTube does not like. There are potential copyright issues and all that even if it's faintly done. And we do not want to lose this footage or coverage. So on the top floor, there is no music. And as we continue to lose tables on the bottom floor, so a higher percentage of players will be moving upstairs. When eventually the entire event will be running on the top floor nearby the TV table. Good, gonna open up his weak ace from early position. Let's see what this tries to do here. He probably would have been the one to open, but is this going to get him out? Oh, he's still going to come on in with a call. And Longstad with a better ace, but there's action in front of him. We'll be just outright jamming for 221,000. Can that be a correct chip count? Because that is a massive jam. It will work in this case, but you're risking quite a lot to win very little. You could have done a standard three bet with this kind of stack depth. It does look like he maybe had a little less, so the chip counts could have been off. But still well played by Longstead and not a move I would do and but perhaps he didn't want to have to worry about anything and happy enough to go if somebody called with Ace Ten. When I usually see somebody do something like that, it does scream you have Ace King, that's the hand most often I would see an <coughs> oversized jam with. So there's about 125 in a stack in reds, That's maybe another 100 in <coughs> So the stack, uh, Ken's stack looks okay. I'm just going to eyeball some of the stacks as the hands go through. Longstead looks like he has slightly more than 200,000. Unless I'm missing something with the visual count. Nothing chip 
my bar is something I can do fairly okay due to the experience I have reporting more than a hundred events from around Europe as a poker reporter. <coughs> One of my other jobs, typically when you see me at a live event, it's 90% of the time as a reporter, maybe 80% as a reporter, 10 to 15 as a commentator, maybe 5 to 10 as a player. I do play quite a bit of live poker tournaments at home, but when I'm on the road away from the family, poker is not only my life, it is my livelihood, and uh, the reporting aspect does help me actually when I'm playing because it's easy for me to count chip stacks of my opponents, probably easier for me than it is for a lot of the players. And also, I've likely seen hands that they've played more often than they've seen hands that I've played. That's less the case at my local casino where that isn't the case, but when I do play on the road, it is the case. Aspasso, back to the action. He did get three steals early, two of them with very speculative holdings. This time, it's more standard with the King Jack suitor from the cutoff. But he's up against a dominating ace jack by Axelson, who does three bet to 40,000. <coughs> Gets a quick fold, picks up a quick pot. Probably happy to just take it right there. And that's why you don't necessarily have to jam your entire stack if you're that deep. But just because I don't do it or <coughs> the players don't do it doesn't mean it's technically wrong. We're not going to get into too much deep strategy on this stream. All the players should be happy with themselves that they made it this far. But there's still a long way to go. Three more days after this before a winner will be crowned in the Norwegian Championship main event. So Ospas back to uh, the more speculative cards. They are suited. He is in late position. This is a move a lot of players would do. It was really just that king three that he raised from early position. That was a bit questionable, but it got through and he showed the three perhaps to uh, get in the players' heads. So root calls, and this is a case where jam is okay. It's under 10 big blinds. He gets one fold with the 8-6, and the timing was phenomenal <laughs> to the squeeze by a fist. Neither player had anything they wanted to call with, even to a short stack jam. And this who started with 90,000 at this TV table has nearly that all back in his stack. Uh, this Thank looks you. like uh, one of the dealers I know fairly okay. Like and yeah. Charlie, <laughs> I see Charlie quite a lot on the no, road. No, no, no. <laughs> Locations, he's one of the many traveling uh, poker dealers that were hired specifically for the Norwegian Championship. The local staff here is quite good, but then when there's big events, they are bringing in dealers and four from the traveling poker dealer slash four groups. And meanwhile, here's a look at all the chip counts. Sogstad and Huskland, both over 400,000. And of course, my pronunciation of some of the Norwegian names will be slightly off, but I'm doing my best to get it as correct as possible. My tongue doesn't pronounce some of the sounds correctly, but Eskland, I'm pretty sure it's correct, as well as Axelson. Ruth is a different question. I'm probably slightly mispronouncing his name while he folds a 6-2. And I don't think Holbrook will defend here, not this time. That was a 5-3, and Sogstad picks up another pot and is near half a million of chips. Sogstad, sporting that classy cool bet hoodie. I do have one of those as well back from a cool bet open. The cool bet is one of the sponsors. 
so top threes are very comfortable. The other sponsors include Unibet, Guts, and BetSafe. All great places to enjoy online poker. And hundreds of Norwegians came in through these uh, qualifiers that were ran. Pass pass back to his raising ways, this time with Queen 10 off from her early position. But so far so good. Let's see if Rockstead decides to defend with King 3. No, he does not. Pass pass wins yet another pot. I'm really short. Sorry. Spit up. I'm not confident in that. This is next So far, the three TV tables have no offense to the last one, which displayed super solid poker. So that was also entertaining. This appears to be the most action table, yeah. which definitely can provide entertainment and fireworks. <coughs> Oprah is going to open the bottom. This is pink 8 suited. Let's see how much this is mine. This is going to release. Looks like a mid-raise. It is a mid-raise. Longstead plays in the rags. And let's see what Sogstead has. Sogstead defends with the Queen 7. We haven't seen the flop yet. Here we go. Six of spades, ace of hearts, six of hearts. Goes check, bet, fold. Easy pot there for Hobra, despite not having to bet pot, has all the aces. So I said, did not have the six, which he basically has most of the sixes. And that gives his opponent credit. He was behind. And we're getting a lot more hands in at this table. Nothing is Charlie doing very fast. <laughs> best dealers in Europe, but the players are also not wasting any time. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like we have a mid-raise, raising, but let's see. No. It was actually raising the 13, so slightly more than a mid-raise. Graphics are quickly catching up. <laughs> Aspas looking like he's going to defend with Ace Five and is technically ahead, not necessarily ahead of range, but ahead hand wise. But Aspas has shown <laughs> that he's not afraid to come out. Of the way. But this is a very interesting flop, folks. Aspas flopping the nut flush draw. Axelson with top pair, queen kicker. Aspas checks as he would be expected to do a lot of the time, and Axelson betting 14,000 into a pot of 35. Aspas will either call or raise here. It looks like a check raise is coming. Check raises it up to 41,000, putting pressure on Axelson with the top pair. It is a coin flip in this spot, with Aspas also having that ace slide bet. Axelson calls, he has a lot of ace kings that he would have been opening with early from early position. Four sets. We could see Axelson try to raise it back, but I think the likely scenario is a call. I don't think he's going to fold his top pair. He does call. And the two of clubs pairing the board on the turn. Ospas not getting that okay. spade, or at least quite yet. And when the <coughs> pairs, <coughs> you could be nervous after your call that your opponent could have a full house, but in this case,
Okay, so I know it's not. I guess check, check. And the ace of clubs on the river, Ospas gets there, but can he stay in the hand long enough to see the value? He does check, Axelson checking down for showdown value. We'll get the bad news that Ospas got there. And Ospas has been entertaining. Wins a decent pot. It looks like those two are <laughs> friends. No, He's pushing a nice hand, got a fist pump. As we've oh, seen on back. all three PGA tables back. today, the players are super friendly, chatting. That's what happens here at the Norwegian Championship, wherever it might be held. This is the first year at Hard Casino Bratislava. <laughs> has made a good temporary home for this festival. And the venue has tons of potential for anyone looking to host a big event here. Four floors. There's about 200 poker tables set up throughout the facility with room for even more if they want it. Socks that opening the button after it folds around to the king deuce. Four two thousand. Aspas, loving him. Loving Aspas, three betting with nine eight offsuit. And Socks that's not going to be able to play along this time. And Aspas is chipping up nicely at the TV table. Absolute rock star. <laughs> can't say that I've ever met Aspas before, but I think if I see him around when the stream is over, he is the kind of person that would be interesting to talk to when you're winding down your day. Rungstad will likely open with the sixes, considering okay. nobody else put any chips in yet. Thirteen thousand. Opens for thirteen thousand. Needs to be careful a little bit there because he said one three, but the dealer knew what he meant. Which should say thirteen or thirteen thousand. I guess even if it was thirteen million, it wouldn't matter. Nobody else showing up with anything and. Charlie gave him the deck set for the next hand. One of the best dealers in Europe. <laughs> there are a lot of very good dealers <laughs> here that I recognize from <laughs> over the years. Hoping for some action, raising it up to 13. Aspas didn't have enough to three bet this time. But Axelson may want to get involved with the King Queen. So not a three bet, but a call, which is the obvious play here with this hand out of position. But it gets Ted Rowe to come on with the Jack 6 suited. So up to 45,000. Sark said miles ahead with the aces. And still. Now miles ahead or even further ahead on the 10, DS9, flop with two hearts. Nobody with hearts in their hand, but that should be a concern for Sogstad. He's going to want to bet. He would probably be betting most flops anyway. Axel said with two over cards, he got shots at the straight. Really the only one who had a decision to make. We expect Rui to, uh, to fold. Unless he's going to try to make a play, sensing some weakness in Sogstad, <coughs> but that would work to his benefit. We could see what Sogstad has. Uh, Axelson still thinking things over. He may have in his head more outs than there are in reality. Really only trying to project for a pair of runners with trips or two pair. 
Does call. Interesting. So let's see how Sockset reacts to that, especially after the Eight of Clubs turn. It's such a wet board. The Queen Jacks, first of all, got there. And now there's two different potential flush draws with one card to come. Is Axelson going to represent he has the King Queen? He may have already checked. Nope, he's checking now. Talks at asking to see his opponent's check um, uh, And unless something fancy happens here, it's likely to win this pot. You can see the equity percentage. But just jams it. And Axelson isn't going to call up just there, even if he thinks his king and queen are alive, which they were not. And Sockstead over half a million once again. He's here to play. It does raise it to 15,000. Now these players have been playing at least most of them with each other a good part of the day. And assuming Aspas isn't just doing this for the stream and this is his style of play. A hand like Ace Jack looks fairly strong against Aspas' opening range. Agrees and will be three betting to 43,000. So, uh, <coughs> Last pass, not immediately folding his six side. Did ask to see his opponent's chips, but <coughs> eventually did fold. <coughs> The loose and wild play by Alcaraz worked earlier at the future table. This yeah, time, that's not the off. case. You can see players are dropping fast, down to just 270 players. So about half the players that began today are already out, and less than a third of the players that played the tournament in general are left in the field. It was a freeze out, so those are 904 individual players in this 800 euro buying championship event. Road raising the button. Eight seven off for fifteen. Possibly save this from some sort of cooler. Got him to fold the A seven, which was dominating the A seven, but he would have been dominated by the ace queen by Hovrud, who hasn't acted yet, but he'll either be calling or three betting. It's too strong of a hand. It's also way too abundant open anyway. It's a raise to 45,000. Now, even though Rhodes in position, we do expect a fold. It doesn't mean he will. There seems like there's a lot of different table dynamics at this table. It does give up on his hand. And Hobrod probably happy to grab some chips. <coughs> Always 
so we're about halfway through this fine level, after which we will go up to 4,000, 8,000, along with an 8,000 big blind ante. dominating Ospas, improving to two pair on the ace five six flop. Perhaps uh, being a bit sneaky when it went check check, but Salk said betting now his top pair is pretty far behind, but it's six or ten will push him ahead. But it's a seven of hearts on the river. It does add that third heart to the board. Salk said bets, if not for that third heart, we may see a raise by Ospas, and Salk said shaking his head. That is unfortunate luck. <laughs> and Aspas asking for a fist bump and socks uh, and obliges, but Aspas just keeps it's climbing like and climbing and climbing with his chip down. So Said raising under the gun with the fives gets Hobra to fold that ace ten under the gun raising range by most players should be pretty strong. Aspas though with the pretty queen jack suited loves to mix it up <laughs> and already mixed it up in a hand earlier against Axel Axel. Sort of a boring seven seven ten flop at least for both players involved, but Axelson 
should be continuing on most swaps, including this one. Octopus holds his two overcards back to our flush draw. Doesn't get to realize any equity. And Axelson back above 200,000 in chips. Likes a larger raising size from what we've seen. <coughs> so far, getting respect from everybody but Aspas. Ace five suited yeah, is a uh, hand uh, like where if it's let's say cut off yeah, yeah. I do I can see yeah. three betting yeah. that kind of hand, but I don't mind in this situation yeah. to just call. I would likely more be tossing this away rather than. Spend some chips on it, but road popping middle pair does actually instead of bet and continue, he's waiting for the turn to do so when it becomes much scarier with three hearts on the board. Fortunate for him, Aspas doesn't have any hearts, but it doesn't seem to be slowing him down from repping them. Putting road in a ridiculous spot, he does have the best hand. Aspas, <coughs> absolutely phenomenal for the action. Definitely a tricky player, the trickiest I've seen thus far at any of the tables, and that includes Espen Jorstad, who is uh, less difficult to figure out the ranges than it could be possible that Aspas has. And we see Aspas doing this with absolutely nothing, but repping the hearts or repping that king-queen that is looking for another heart not to peel out. Oh my! Road just jamming, snipping out Aspas's bluff. Aspas bolts. Kent Rood. That is a scary board. I mean, he did have the best hand with the second pair with the pair of his hands in the a good time after winning that pot. <laughs> It was a nice try by Aspas. <laughs> I love the heart, but then I love the bigger heart there, at least on that particular hand by Road. Phenomenal. I can see why we have this table at the TV table. While there are no famous big names as far as I can tell, we do have so much action. And Fist jamming for about 14 big blinds from under the gun. He will be in the blind soon. I do like this when you're under the gun with eights, especially. This is something I would maybe already be willing to just open and not jam with uh, if I was in later position. But from under the gun, love the jam. If he runs into nines or higher, so be it. And if he has to flip, so be it. But very often, if you just raise, you're going to have to play those eights out of position. You might as well get to see all five cards if you're called, and it's not the worst case scenario if there are two folds. Really, the worst case scenario is if you run into a bigger pocket pair. But fairly standard his play. Get some chips and back to a starting stack. We have a few folds. I expect Aspas, who likes to open pots, to do it with this ace five off. He does open for a little more than a min raise to 13. So far, everybody folding. Let's see if uh, Peter Fist. Ops defend. He is the short stack at the table. And does call. I mean, he is priced in. Even with the short stack, I don't mind the call. It just turns out he's dominated. 
by the ace five, but we'll be able to get away from this pretty easily if Cosmos does continue. And it looks like he did for 15,000. And it was a snap hold. Aspas once again picking up some chips. Absolute legend, this guy. And I'm pretty sure he's not doing it just for the TV table. He would maybe be doing that in a very small buy-in tournament with no prestige on the line, but this is one of the most prestigious tournaments in the game. Perhaps for many Norwegians, the most prestigious. There's a lot of pride to getting your photo on the wall permanently by becoming a Norwegian champion main event winner. And never mind the massive prize pool that's going to go along with this event <coughs> to the winner. With 904 entries getting into the mix. I'm not sure if they've announced payouts yet. We don't see them here in the graphics. I imagine that at least on the break we'll take a peek out on the big board and see where we're at. We're buried away behind the scenes so that we can't get any spoilers. Nobody can find us exactly the way I like it. And even when I'm out in the open I put up a sign, don't give away spoilers. But then you can hear some of the noise about what's happening and kind of guess that something big is going to happen so it's better to be packed away so everything is fresh and new and I know my Norwegian colleagues who are commentating right now as well feel the same but shout out to them they've been doing a fantastic job all week they've been covering all the tournaments on the stream I had to miss a few events because of the amazing cash game action that we've had which is broadcast actually in a different studio booth that's how big this facility is you, there's actually two separate TV tables overhead bracing for 19,000 it'll work here no point in getting cute with the bridges maybe Aspas would just because he seems to like to do the unexpected but now we expect the unexpected from Aspas. That's probably a slogan I'm stealing from somebody. Expect the unexpected. This would be under the gun open, likely from every player at the table. Maybe not the shortest stack where it would be perhaps even a jam, but hey, good day. from Aspas, we know it would be an open. Good here with the king jack <laughs> going from the hijack. He may not do that if it was another <laughs> player <laughs> from under the gun. We don't know that. <laughs> There's a little bit of a speculative call from the hijack though. I'm not necessarily saying it is a bad call, especially against Ospas, but speculative for sure. And Ospas flopping top pair while Rude with two overcards, gut shot to a straight. And who's going to bleep Ospas now? The 10 pairs aboard. He has a 10. He's betting out his trips. After checking the flop for 25,000, is Kent able to sniff this out? We saw Kent isn't afraid to play, but that's when he connected with at least a piece of the board. Here he would need some help on a river if he opts to call or raise here. But he's not buying the story of Ospas, even though it happens to be true this time. And it could spoil, spell trouble for him with the jack of hearts on the river, although Ospas may be afraid of that king-queen. 
But would Rode really be fighting with that? I guess so, considering he fought it for the King off. Jack. But that's the only combination he's Among that in afraid of. Obviously, he's behind some 10 jacks, but would have Rode played that so passively? Is unsure. Maybe against Aspas he would. Aspas seems to uh, understand he's aggressive as well. But it's a very big bet of 60,000, uh, or at least on the bigger size, 60,000 into 91. And can Root get away? I mean, I don't see how he can get away after he called the turn, but he's now, I think, playing through the hand again in his head. I think this is going to cost him now. Isn't it? He's trying to figure out the story. Perhaps trying to get a read on Aspas now five. too. And I would say normally you shouldn't talk when you want a player to fall or fold, but Aspas seems to mix up his talking game as well, so. And now maybe Root thinks not only is good, but he's maybe for value. Nope, he just calls. We'll get the bad news that this time Aspas had the goods. Nice hand. Thank you, sir. And Root says, nice hand like a gentleman. Understanding that this time Aspas wasn't caught with a hand in the cookie jar. And such amazing play, and I like Aspas's friendliness. And I would also like to thank Charlie for his amazing dealing. We had so many, we probably had one or two extra hands just because it was him dealing. But Roar Aspas now is the table captain taking over the reins from Arthur Solstad. It doesn't matter too much at this point who table captain is. Both those players are big stacks along with Sigurd Eskland. The rest of the table has bearing stacks and Mats Peter Bits <laughs> has the short stack with 13 big blinds with blinds likely to go up within the next 10 minutes if my internal clock is correct. Escoyant will be opening under the gun. It looks like for 13. It's a little more than a win raise with this big second. Axelson with the 9. So we already have two premium hands by the first two players. We'll just flat respecting his opponents under the gun open. Perhaps it would be different if it was Aspas open, who has a much wider under the gun range. And Kent Rood folds. This will fold this five deuce. And oh my god, Hovrad waking up with the Cowboys. We could see this pocket much bigger, very fast. Looks like 44 or 45,000. Raises it up to 45,000. Rogstad with the easy fold. The players in the blinds quickly folding. Let's see what Esquan does. He's kind of in a weird spot with the ace king. It is suited. It's such a pretty hand. I will not blame him for four betting. If he peels, he's out of position. And if he calls, he's pricing Axelson in to do the same. If Esquan four bets, expect to see <laughs> Axelson fold. I like how Esquin is at least taking his time. And does jam it for 395,000, covering both players. A snap hole by Exelson, a snap <coughs> call by Hovrad, who's at risk. He's a two to one favorite with his Cowboys against Ace King suited. And so far is ahead on the three of spades, jack of diamonds, eight of spades flop.
still ahead on the ten of diamonds turn, but a queen or an ace now on the river, and it showers for Hovred. If not, he wins a <coughs> massive pot. Oh no! Ace of clubs on the river! I feel so bad for Hovred there. Got it in good with the Cowboys. Esplin gets there though. You can't really blame Esplin for how he played that hand either. Got a little lucky and is now the table chip captain with more than 650,000. Meanwhile, very good game for Hovred. Nothing you did wrong, just a massive setup cooler. Bad beat, whatever you want to phrase that. But that's how poker goes sometimes. You get it in good. Another player shows up with something good. The board doesn't run to your favor, and it is Sayonara. Wow. A hijack jam by Peter Viss. This is fine. The blinds are about to go up, but it is for 13 big blinds. Unfortunately for him, if Rongstad decides to get involved, he has him dominated. But this is why you jam and not raise. He could have obviously folded. He got the dominating ace jack out of the way. Sogstad also folding the ace seven. Aspas too weak for him to call and gets away with it. Back up to 94,000. Got some better hands to fold. Do like that play. Still doesn't have a starting stack back, but continues to see orbit after orbit. This is not one of the poker dealers I personally know, but she seems to be doing a fantastic job, but it should come as no surprise based on what we've seen throughout the week. They deserve all the praise they've been giving them and more for their hard work. Working crazy hours day and night because there's yeah, cash games no. running non-stop yeah. as well. There were dozens upon dozens of cash games going into the wee hours of the morning. But back to the action, because we have something interesting going on. We have Rude using his 2.5x opening size that we've seen him use before. Opening from under the gun with ace nine and wrong stat with nines are is jamming for 230,000. So for nearly 40 big blinds, it doesn't look like he has 240 in the stack, but it is quite a lot. Does not matter. Picks up the chips. Does not have to worry about playing nines post flop. Really enjoying this table, if you can't tell. I mean, I've enjoyed the other tables as well, but this has taken it to a next level. A lot of it is thanks to this gentleman here, Aspas, who's going to be opening his 9-6 offsuit from the cutoff. Esquen, who just won a massive pot, holds his ace-3, but Axelson going nowhere with his ace-king. I will not blame him if he just wants to jam it, even though he has between 25 and 30 big blinds. He will be making a standard three bet instead. This is more normal on his stack depth, even out of position, but very often people with Ace King just want to get it in. And Aspas not getting cute, tossing his the chips over to Axelson. 
we should be over 200,000 now. It's been quite the entertaining table. I keep saying that over and over. The last table was more like standard poker, which was also interesting to watch. There was some non-standard plays, but nothing egregious. The first table we see saw some things that I wouldn't do but also nothing egregious. There was a limping strategy I didn't understand. But it didn't mean that it couldn't be profitable, even if I don't understand it. <coughs> and Sox said opening for 13,000 from early position and Rood with the ace queen is just saying, screw it, I'm getting all my chips in right here. Fist not waking up with anything, and I don't think Sokset can call off a, more than a third of his stack with King-10. Uh, he didn't snap hold either. Very soon after I say that, he did fold, and Rude picks up some chips. Did not want to have to play ace-queen, close swap out of position with his stack depth. Did not want to do a standard three-bet sizing as well which was possibly the reason he didn't want to be called and avoid a pot out of position. He didn't want to call himself and play a smaller pot out of position. Just had to hope he wasn't against ace-king, kings, or aces, and even if he's called, he flips. And blinds have gone up to 4,000, 8,000 with an 8,000 big blind, Andy. We started the day with 1,500, so it's more than triple of what we started the day with. So it should be no surprise that players have been dropping off. They have been going up slowly every hour. Ospos with a more uh, standard hand to be raising with will be min raising with the king queen suited. So far, the rest of the table with rags. Peter, who's now down to less than 10 big blinds, so he's really in shove fold area unless he's in the big blind facing a raise that he can still call and not shove if he wants otherwise if he's first to act or not he should be shoving and Aspa showing he doesn't always have a three when he's showing and this time he's showing his king queen I think just showing he can have strong hands weak hands or semi strong hands such as this one while well, king queen suited is nice but from early position it's a little bit less nice. <laughs> but because of this, it's very hard to put a range on Aspas. We obviously can't put him on the exact hand because we can see his cards. But we're also 30 minutes in the past. Esquint with the nines will be opening. He has plenty of chips now as well. <laughs> Giving a player a bad beat with Ace King suited against the Cowboys. Sending him packing. Axelson. And it's Peter, now finding a spot to get a stack in. He will be flipping. I can't see Esplin folding, especially with his chip count. A 10 big blind jam. On the button by Peter, Esquint who opened. <laughs> it's looking like he's asking for a count, but I think once he sees what it is, he will be calling. Indeed he does. And it's Peter Quist flipping for his tournament life. If he wins this flip, he will have some breathing room. If not, he will be on the rail. There's a small chance, very slim, that we get something like a street on the board or something like that, a flush on the board. All the, all the flushes are covered that we will have a chop pot, but I just don't see that happening. But improves the top pair, puts on its jacket, ready to go, but has top pair now. Massive favorite, Esquin needs a nine or a diamonds. There are no diamonds, so Esquin down to two outs if he wants to send this to the rail. I mean, after getting lucky before with ace king versus kings, I'm sure he's not that disappointed. And look how relieved this is. Jacket comes back off. He a big sigh of relief and is up to 176,000 and for the first time at the feature table does have a lot of breathing room. 
That hand basically did play itself, but it was still exciting nonetheless. You have to open with your nines. You have to be jamming your 10 big blind stack with ace king, and then nines has to be calling that. Whether you're the loosest or tightest player, that should always be the case. And Esklund's turn for the ace king after just losing a pot with nines, but still has a lot of chips. Bumping it up to 18,000 from under the gun. And Rumpstead now with the ace queen. A couple players rebet with the ace queen. It's, it is disastrous if Rumpstead does the same. He is facing an under the gun open, but it is by the chip leader at the table. just a call, which is uh, perhaps good for him, he is in position. Unless, of course, we see an ace on the flop and it could spell trouble. Rumstead <laughs> now has 15 big blinds stuck in his stack with all that in the pot. Oh no, both players flopping an ace. It's going to be very hard for Rumstead to get away from this. Esquin should continue. There are two diamonds there. There are other hands that potentially can get there that Rockstack would have called with. And bets out for 15,000. Rockstack can go nowhere. It's just a question of whether he can save his tournament life or not. He has to at least call, if not raise. So raise would not work out to his benefit. He does play it safe with the call. The timing on the turn can slow it down. Otherwise, maybe not. But the three of spades parry the board in the turn. Neither player should really have a three in their hands. So that shouldn't change much. If Esquin felt he was good, which he should, he should still feel he's good. And if he puts his opponent on a weaker ace, he should bet. If he puts his opponent on a flush draw, he should try to make them pay the price to see that river. Now Rung said, can he sniff this out that maybe my queen is not good here, or maybe I am good, maybe my opponent doesn't play a strike. It would be a very sick fold if he can find it, but I just don't see how. Because if you fold a hand like this, you could really be pushed around. It's just a bit of a cooler for him. I can see the only thing that may have saved him is if he pre bet pre and I pulled it to a four bet. But that's all very speculative. I don't mind the call on the button playing the hand in position. Keeping the pot down so much. It does jam it. Esplin just as quickly calls. And Rungstead is going to get the bad news. He's down to three outs. There are some outs to a chop as well. So there's a 7% chance of a split. And a 7% chance that Rungstead will suck out on the river. And the two of diamonds completing the board on the river. GG to Rungstead. Very rough floor there. But seems to be taking it well. And Esquin now, who lost a decent chunk of the pot that of the stack now. Over 700,000 chips, and that's the most chips we've seen by any single player at any of the feature tables. Esquire did get lucky when it was Ace Queen King, eliminated opponent earlier with Kings, then lost the flip with Nines against Ace King, and Ace King doing it again. So when he has Ace King, he's winning hands. When he's up against Ace King, he's losing hands. That's all just very coincidental. I figured I would point that out.
Spade on the river and set up it's a seven of hearts. Sock set with the check mark. But Peter Fist is the one reaching for his chips. And trying to wrestle this one away. Is that going to work? A bet of 35,000. What kind of story is he trying to tell them? That nearly isn't enough to be scaring Sock set away, or is it? Or is he just trying to set the price thinking maybe his ace is good? <laughs> Everything seems a bit strange. I don't think <laughs> that that bet makes sense to me. And it looks like Sogstad is thinking the same. It's when these unorthodox things happen. It, it gives you some thoughts. And it, <coughs> if it does call, it wouldn't have cost him much if he was wrong. I think it lucky in one regard that no spit hit the river. But this is ace high, does not match up very well against the paired up nine. And now Sogstad up to 500,000 for this. Not too far though. He just got away from the danger zone. It's right back in there with eight big lines. And back in push fold mode. Very 
hard for him to fall knowing he might be facing a bigger bet in the river. So it's good if he's making his decision now. He was about to call. I don't, I don't think Dorothy could have taken off uh, this step. And I think he does, thinking that maybe he's still good. Or maybe thinking of the three of diamonds he's five as well. But the six of spade pairs the board. I don't think that'll slow Aspas down, but if like uh, Axelson had something like pocket sevens, even pocket sixes, I think he'd be three betting the jacks and tens. Would have gotten ahead. We see that that's not the case. And Aspas looks like he's putting his opponent to the test for his tournament life. This is why I would have liked to see Axelson make a decision on the turn. And now, if he felt his threes were good before, he should still think they're good now. But can he put all his chips in? And if he does, he's going to be very disappointed. Even if you make a mistake, he shouldn't be compounding it. And I'm not necessarily saying Axelson made a mistake because we're being very results oriented. We'd have to run this hand through in a little more detail. It is a weird spot. And does make the call and is out the door. Well played by Aspas, using his image to his advantage. Unfortunate for Axelson that he went out in that way. Aspas has been a gentleman throughout. At least Axelson is able to smile on his way away from the feature. <coughs> grabbing his belongings and maybe we'll see a new player. We do have at least 40 minutes left in this line level. So we likely will see some new blood. Thank you. Thank you. Showing only five oh, players back so there, but we know we have more than five at the table. Or do we? Burde det også sige her? For en stik måned bag tæppet. I'm only counting five, so perhaps we are at five handed, in which case we will definitely be getting another player ASAP, if not two new players. Det er veldig vanskeligt da. Det er jo utilregnelig. I don't think anybody should be happy about being the With aggression. I'm not sure who we're missing. It looks like we have one new player in C2 that I don't recognize quite yet. Peter is going to be in the big blind next hand. Besides, he needs to get it in now with his eight big blinds with his baby suited connectors. So far, nobody waking up with a hand. He may get away with one. With you? Good luck. So far, so good. It may be different with Kent Road here. Kent Road coming in. Far ahead oh, against yeah. Peter and Chris. <laughs> we could be losing two players in two hands. This needs to get lucky. He's a two to one underdog. He doesn't want to see for spades either, which uh, was part of the reason why this was an okay jam, because he was suited. <coughs> but his suits are counterfeited. Rude would win with a better flush if that took place. For the second time we see this putting on his jacket, but maybe he was a little bit too soon because he flopped top pair in the 2-4-5 top yeah, yeah, yeah. and also has a gut shot to a straight on top of that. Needs to fade a king or a queen. The eight of hearts on the turn is a blank for Root. This may once again be doubling for the second time at the feature table. He doubled up and then spewed some chicks back and indeed gets there with his 6-5 up to the ace of diamond quits board on the river. And for the second time, he's taking his jacket off and sitting right back there. And now we can see that clock in the background. There's 40 minutes left in this blind level. So still quite a bit of time. But then we will go on our final break of the day. Blinds will go up to 5,000, 10,000 after the break. And then 6,000, 12,000 at the end of the day.
Aspas opening the hijack. We know he can open wider than ace four based on what we've seen. At least he has an ace this time. But Aspas is here to play, here to have fun, here to be aggressive. All those things fit in very nicely together. The chip leader wants to play along, and it looks like a three bet with the queen sent off. This is the first light three bet we've seen, but he is facing a light I opener. Likely to get some credit actually from Aspas, who has shown a lot of intelligence at the table. Unless he has a read on his opponent, and quickly folds. Well played by S1. Recognizing that he can get away with some three bets against uh, Aspas that might be lighter than he would have against another player opening. And if he ran into a monster, he'd be easily able to get away from that hand. Wouldn't be happy about losing 50,000, but we'd still have a massive pile of chips. Just notice that Iron Maiden t shirt. I grew up on Iron Maiden. Amazing. 80s metal band. Surprised that people from Norway recognize that fact, or perhaps he just likes the T-shirt. But I have a feeling he is an Iron Maiden fan. It's still a bit complicated for my son to learn. But shout out to Lucas, even though he's not watching. He's a better guitar player than me at 11 years old. So Peter Fisk, yeah. never mind this, Aspas raises light once again. Peter finding tens this time, jamming a bit more than what we've seen him jam with before, but I do like the play. When it's a three bet jam, it's much different than an open jam. Picks up the pot, can't be too disappointed. He would have only been a two to one favorite. No need to put the jacket on this time and then take it back off again. It was no call. now with a premium and it's hard to ever give him credit for a hand so with the ace king let's see if anybody tries to play back at him this time <laughs> this time Esquan just opts to flat with his uh, pseudo connectors and not three bet like we saw a few hands ago with the queen 10 we may see these two tangle up quite a bit it's kind of a shame we're likely to lose this feature table after this blind level really loving the action but perhaps we'll get a different action table. It is nice to see new players all the time. Without this feature table, I wouldn't have discovered Aspas, for example. And let's just say there's a little man love going on here. And it's Silkstad, the only one connecting with this board who defended from the big line, but it's Aspas. Who has two upper cards, a Broadway uh, draw as well. Deciding to be the one to uh, lead out after Sogstad checked. Esquant folded, Sogstad called with his middle pair. <coughs> Both player, uh, Sogstad checking three club turn is Aspas gonna keep the aggression. This looks like a over bet to the pot, but let's get this confirmed. Looks like a bet of a hundred thousand though. Indeed it is. Putting pressure on Soakstead. Soakstead is ahead. 
Ospos can still get there, but very difficult spot for him. Knowing Ospos can have just about anything. In this case, he has a hand, but he doesn't. He had a hand pre-flop that super strong, but on this board, it doesn't look as strong. There's still some potential on the river, but this could get the job done. It's going to be awfully hard for Sogstad to call. And does fall to Aspas doing it again. Respect. And up to 651,000. I believe he had 300 and change to start off this feature table. Let's out a big smile there. And if he looks back on the stream, he'll be happy to see that he got a jack to fold there. <laughs> really having a good time this table. Aspas not only seems like a crazy aggressive player, not crazy in a bad way, but yes, indeed, crazy hyper aggro. <laughs> does seem like a super friendly, nice guy as well. Just about everybody here is friendly and nice, but Aspas also outgoing on top of that. We have a new player, Larson, at the table. Certainly open a ball from the button. Aspas will do something with this Queen 10 suited from the big line. Either call or raise. Looks like he will just call. time Aspas getting a little lucky considering how dominated he was. I mean there's still more cards to come but flopping top pair on the Queen 9-4 rainbow flop. Larson with an over card and a gut shot to the straight. Does continue for 13. Aspas falls at almost as quickly as the bet comes out. <coughs> Now also with the flush draw on top of top pair after the three of spades. That's uh, a three of clubs, I'm sorry. Screen is a little bit small and I thought it was a spade, but it's a club. But does induce a bet by Larson. Now Larson doesn't necessarily uh Ospas doesn't necessarily know he's good, but he's not going anywhere with the top pair. This tank kicker might not be good as a opponent could have other things as well. And the six of spades on the river. Ospas playing this hand passively, but he is out of position. Carson checking it back. And Ospas once again taking down a pot. It seems like no matter what he does, he's doing it right. And there's over 700,000 in chips. Very exciting <laughs> poker <laughs> at this feature <laughs> table. <laughs> I hope to see more of Aspas either later today or later in the week. And I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly as well. I sometimes have trouble with some of the Norwegian symbols. And another new player, Tom Tomta. It looks like Sobsad is getting ready to open the button. Indeed he does. Wanted to make sure that his bed size was clear to the dealer. I 
recommend a lot of people to do that. Don't just toss chips and bumble something. Make sure you're clear when you're bet. Lesson to be learned from what Sogstad did there. S clan, depending with the fives, more than fine, even to a two and a half X open. Especially on the stack steps, he could have defend to an even bigger open. But what a flop for Sogstad. Flopping two pair. Obviously, his opponent has some king jacks and pocket eights, so he's behind. But it doesn't matter. Things are going to go no further with Esquin folding his fives, not making the same mistake that we saw earlier with another player pulling down their pocket pair, but that was against Aspas and a much different situation. Aspas back to having fun, three putting the 9 6, getting Sulkstad to fold. Oh no, uh, Sulkstad calling the 9 8. We have a leveling war going on with the king, que king, king, queen flop. If Aspas continues, Sulkstad does have only a back door to the flush, but it does go check, check. And now with the 9 of clubs turn, this is likely to end in a chop pot if it continues to go check, check. Technically, Sogstad is ahead. <coughs> it does complete it as a chop pot. It looks like Aspas trying to show Sogstad some respect for calling his big three bet. Enjoying the fight despite only chopping the pot there. Aspas back at it again with the suited jack nine, and we have a new player, Strom, here. <laughs> Calling from the small blind with queen ten suited. He hasn't seen all the craziness that's happened, but maybe he at least saw that last hand. And a jam here by Rode. It will work, even though it's only for 12 big blinds, because nobody else has much of anything. Good timing, perhaps a good read on the situation, and a reason to smile for Kent Rude. Det er ikke så 
Larson <coughs> under the gun now. One of the new players at the table. Tomta to open to 20,000 from early position. That's kind of thinking about what to do from the cutoff. Doesn't look like uh, he wants to give up and is reaching for chips. He does just call. who twice was on crumbs only to double up. Got, he got his jacket on full times only to take it back off. Was thinking about what to do with the king nine but did fold. And you can see a lot of the kings and nines would already be out. No love for either player on this seven four deuce flop. However, Tomsa is not deterred is betting 16,000 into a pot of 60,000. Esquin still has some back doors, but on that all black flop, we'll see how he plays it. He may try to bluff it. He may try to just call and see what happens with action on the turn and try to take it down there, or maybe he will even improve on the turn. Seven of clubs pairing the board in the turn, so any potential flushes got there, but also uh, it is a scaryish turn regardless. Tomta, who doesn't have a lot of chips anymore, is really hoping he can steal this one away. But can Esquin sniff it out? It is another small bet. Or did Tomta get away with one? Well played by Tomta. He was ahead, but at the same time, He's happy to take the pot. He wasn't betting to gain value. He was betting to take down the pot, and he got what he wanted. Back to the action, Tomta, who before had King-10, has something much stronger with the Cowboys, raising it up to 20,000. Strom looking down and wanting to play his ace-jack. And not only playing it, making an ill-timed three bet. The 65,000. And you can see there's at least one other ace there. So the chances of him winning this, at least the odds that we see are the true odds because of a lot of uh, TV table streams that take it out. Tomta just jamming it. 228,000. Now does Strom feel he's priced in? It would be for more than half his stack if he made the call. And Tomta, running back to back hands, goes from a short stack to having some room to breathe. So even with the new players, we're having some fun. Also, tidligere når vi har været inne fra sidebord, så har vi gerne været nede, der er der flest. Men her oppe ved tv-bordet, så er det også ganske mange bord rundt omkring. Vi ser jo da dette tv-bordet, så vi følger helt i bakkant her. Vi ser at det er placeret ganske mange spillere rundt omkring. Men, men jeg, jeg har egentlig tatt turen jeg inn mot det bordet her, fordi at det virker som at noen har det hyggeligere når de spiller kort enn andre. Er vi enige i det? Er det god stemning? Her er det absolutt god stemning. Der er det. 
Er det utelukkende fordi du har chips, eller er det bare generelt hyggelige folk? Nei, det hjelper på å ha chips. Det er generelt hyggelig god stemning. Vent litt, skal vi prøve her også. Hva sa du for noe? Jeg sier det er god stemning uansett hva stekk du har. Se på dette. Du var jo over startstekk. Ja, ja, ja. Og spilt i to dager, ja. Og så vet du hvor mye over startstekk. Jeg tror i hvert fall at det er en gjeng som koser seg. Og jeg tror at det er noen som er bedre rustet til kanskje å ta takle hvis det skulle gå tom for chips enn andre. Jeg tror dette her er en lovende gjeng, men... Da har vi Tor Hansen. Ja, da har vi Tor Hansen neste tournament. Ja, den starter jo snart, da må du fortsette. Den har startet, jeg prøver. Men de kaster seg. Så for de som er i tvil så starter jo da altså Thor Hansen Invitational ganske så snart som er en av de turneringene med flest deltakere. Der er det over 500 med, og i main event så var det jo da akkurat over 900, men god stemning i hvert fall ute på sidebordene. Se her får vi svar på tiltale også, da blir det jo en all in fra hjørnet. Avgjørelse da fra Button som opprinnelig har spilt opp, og det er... Forsøk med bestikkelser, med pilser også. Bestikkelsen har allerede gjort, han har fått øl. Han har fått øl, så bestikkelsen er gjort, han skal kaste. Det jobbes i hvert fall med alle muligheter her for å få det kastet. Det tyder kanskje ikke på styrke. Når vi ser all innen, så er det et bud på cirka 122 000. Mens det er investert 16 000 opprinnelig fra det bøtten i oppspillet, ser at han sitter da med 100 000 totalt i den stacken. Vurderer veldig frem og tilbake. Kanskje kan dette være med å prege litt den gode stemningen på bordet også. Det blir i hvert fall et syn, og vi får opp et niepar fra Big Blind. Det er knekt ni som vises fra bøtten. Det er kun tre knekter i utgangspunktet som kan... Seier ut, det er i hvert fall en åtter, det er en sekser, det er ingen hjelp, bortsett fra at det er backdoor med en hjerter også. Ikke mer backdoor, er du ved? Og så kommer det en hjerter til på turn, det gir hjerterdrag, det gir knekt, og det er de to eneste, men i bånd kommer det en hjerter. Hvorfor er den øl? Og det er to hjerter som kommer turn og river for å... Det er en jinx, det er fint. Ja, det er en jinx, det er fint. Ja, det var min feil utelukkende. Det er ingen backdoor. Sponser du innkjøp i Thor Hansen på den jinxen der? Så det var utelukkende det at det ble nevnt mulig i backdoor? Ja, det er lunkende jinx i for deg. Her ser vi i hvert fall at her er det vanskelig å være live-kommentator for nevner du hjerteren, så er det den som kommer. Back to the action. Thank you once again to the amazing Svede for bringing us some of what it looks like from the rest of the floor. Typically on streams, we only see what's happening at the TV table, so it's great to have a host going around, talking to the players, walking around the room. It was amazing during the heads-up match, every all-in and call on the side table because we were down to the semifinals. So we were seeing all the action on the finals, but also all the all-in and calls on the side tables, thanks to Svede. But meanwhile, back to the action. We have Esquin opening his nines under the gun more than standard, and Sogman making a, uh, a call from the small blind, but improving after a jack comes on the four queen jack flop. Perhaps a little bit scared by that queen, but maybe more confident now that Esquin checked it back and may look for some love on this five of club turn. Bets one third of the pot on the turn. Does Esquin think his nines are good? It seems like he'll at least reevaluate on the river or try to steal it away. Maybe trying to get hands exactly like what Sogstad has to fold. But never mind, Sogstad is keeping it up, thinking that his jack is probably good. That is a value bet. He knows he's not getting any queens to fold. Esquin does give quickly, quickly does notice that he's behind, gives up on the hand. 
Meanwhile, Sogset picks up another pot. It's up to nearly 600,000. Jack raises it up. We don't see yet, but he's been going two and a half X most of the time, so I expect it to be 20,000. And it is. We're learning how the players play. Larson jamming it in with his nines, and if nobody shows up with anything, expect this to work. But Tomta with the eights, one pair less. Larson would love this to have his nines go up against eights, but would be a little bit nervous as well until he sees his cards turn over. Meanwhile, Tomta would be having to put in about 40% of his stack, a little bit more. And he would likely jam over the top if he was indeed, and there was an early position opener to consider. Tomta able to get away with the eights. Rhodes shouldn't be able to find a call here with his Queen Jack for his tournament life. Doesn't seem too thrilled about the situation. And Larson up to 160,000. Sevens jams it in for 149,000 for about 18 bits. So far, nobody having a hand to even think about calling. But maybe I said that too quickly, but of course, Sogset does hold this king six. Aspas likes to be aggressive, but he's not going to be. This wouldn't be aggressive. It would be like a passive wrong call. But Esquint. With the eights, now we saw another player just fold their eights correctly to pocket nines. This time, <laughs> eights would be fine. And eights by Esquint, even if he's wrong, it wouldn't be, it's only a third of his stack. Which is a significant portion. Actually, about a quarter of his stack, which is still significant. Esquin does call. This is going to put his jacket on for the third time. <coughs> especially when he sees how far behind he is this time around. It could be showers for Fist. Esquin in amazing shape to win a 314,000 pot. And the jacket indeed that comes back on. And we can see from the clock it's near the end of level 14. And nothing doing for the sevens on the 10-5-4 flop. Esquin, a 9-1 to one favorite to win the hand at this point. The four diamonds on the turn makes it even slimmer that Fisk will be able to stay alive and with a big stack. Esquin needs to fade two outs. The 10 of spades parry the board of the river. Fisk wishing everybody a good game. Can't really blame him for getting it in with the sevens. Just happened to run into Esquin's eights. Meanwhile, Esquin didn't have much of a sweat there. Usually you can't have a sweat with eights, but not when you're up against the sevens. Back up above 700,000 in chips. Happy days for Esquin, not so much for Fist. And here's a look at some of the chip counts. As we mentioned, Esquin 
who just won that pot back as a table captain. The very entertaining Roar Aspas, not too far behind Silk Snap, also with a good stack. Nikolai Strom with that middle stack, Sindre Tomta with 293,000. And meanwhile, Kim Larson and Kent Ruth are the short stacks at the table with only Ruth kind of in a little bit of trouble with that 15 big line stack, still with 20. You can wait for your spots a little bit more with one hour blind levels. Ruth can also wait for his spots, but it's kind of getting into danger zone if he doesn't do something quickly. Seems like eight is the hand of the last 10 minutes. We've seen this now for the third time in somebody's hand in the last three or four hands. And Tomta making an easy open. The sizing is on the bigger side, but still not massive, two and a half X. But Esklund now with Cowboys. Before he was one with eights to eliminate this with sevens. How is he gonna play this? A three bet's almost certain. It is a three bet to 55,000. Love that sizing. Let's see if Tom Tuck can get away from the hand. If he calls, he's out of position with the eights. Then it becomes more of a set mining situation and does make the correct ball. Good read. And Esklund was not pulling the table, at least not that time. Did have the goods. Although he might be disappointed about that hand in particular, he shouldn't be that disappointed based on how he has run this level. the last We're go hour on our 20 and break. change. Before we go on the 20 minute break, I'm gonna rack you guys up and we'll be right back to table number 305, okay? Table 305, same one you guys came from, all right? So it sounds like a break is coming up fairly soon. The floor was informing the table that they are gonna be moving to an outer table, so we'll have some fresh names. <laughs> After we come back, that's always exciting too. I would have been more than happy to keep this table though. Tons of action, tons of fun. But it's more fair to be switching the tables around on a day two and beyond. Different a little bit on an opening day. around to road in the small blind. If somebody opened, I would expect him to three bet shove, and he opened shoves up. Arson with nothing doing with the five deuce. Road getting it done up to 117,000. <coughs> Although that's near 15 big blinds with blinds going up fairly shortly to 5,000, 10,000. If he doesn't wind up with more chips before the break, he will have less than 12 big blinds. But still not the worst case scenario. Even if he's called by a hand like 5-2, it, it's not certain that ace-queen will hold. It's about a 2-1 to one favorite. Sometimes the certainty is best. Raising to 16,000 and Larson getting a little feisty here from the small blind, not believing Strom's story from the cutoff. Jamming for 144,000, looking for some chips before the blinds go up, and it works. Great read there by Larson. 
he would have been ahead if he got a call, but nothing lighter is going to call his jam. You're not going to see an ace seven call. The only thing potentially lighter that would call it would be king queen suited, but then uh, he wasn't doing that necessarily for value, and he could have been in a lot of trouble with that move. Said, waking up with the queens after it folds around to him, probably wish there was some action in front of him. He is up against the aggressive Aspas, who may opt to defend with the 10-3 suited. And then with Aspas, he could even be three betting with that, but he slowed down some Aspas. Maybe had his fun, got some chips, and it's time to slow down. But maybe this flop won't slow him down, actually. Flop bottom pair, Sunset is expected to continue. Aspas quickly calls a bet of 25,000. And that will likely slow at least Sogstad down. That's a scary turn. Seven of clubs on the river. You would expect to see Sogstad check again. Aspas with some showdown value checks it back. We'll see that uh, maybe that turn actually turned out to be good for him because if it was something else, uh, Socks that would have continued along. I think Ospos could have gotten rid of the hand as well, unless it was something that he pulled ahead of his opponent. The new player, Val. We won't see very much of him because we should be going on break fairly soon. But opening it up for 3x from early position, getting a call from Tompa, a fairly loose call with Queen Jack offsuit. Val improving to top pair, but may not want to go nuts on this with a call. 
behind, but that's not that slowing him down. It wasn't a big bet, it doesn't seem. And it looks yeah, like Tomka wants to board yeah. here. He doesn't have back or flush. I guess a back or Broadway draw. Or maybe just thinks he can take it down. Or it may even be raising it to trying to wrap a better raise. Does indeed raise to 50,000. Trying to make a move. Let's see if Bob will stay above. I mean, he does have top pair, but that kicker is crap. That's why this kind of open from early position can get you in trouble. Decisions, decisions for Aval. He just came to the table, about to play a hand. And Tompa pulling one off at the TV table for the last hand. This table will be moving to a side table. We'll have a fresh table after the break. Be back soon. This is Jason Glatzer bringing to you live in English the Norwegian Championship main event. If you want to listen to the Norwegian, please do. We have Stig and Michelle uh, providing the action in live time in Norwegian. And see you soon.